Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and I'm still looking for the lie. Uh, so it says, one of the statements below is a lie. Can you spot the fraud? Okay, um, now you can see that these problems that I have going on uh, today, uh, these equations here involve some order of operations, what we think of usually as order of operations problems. What do I mean by that? I just mean that there's more than one operation going on. So like uh, here, if you look at the expression on the left-hand side of this equation, there's two operations, subtraction, and there is multiplication. Uh, same thing here, we have two operations. We have subtraction and we have an exponent. We also have a grouping coming in here to affect the order. Uh, here, I can see an exponent, and I can see some multiplication. And here, I have subtraction. Uh, I have uh, that radical, which is part of the family of exponents. And I have, again, a grouping going on, which will affect order. So all that being said, anytime you have more than one thing to uh, do, and it's like more than one thing to simplify, more than one operation to perform, you should refer to the order of operations. So. I know most teachers teach it differently than I do. I promise you I have my reasons for not teaching it that common way, but I use the four-step reminder GEMMA to talk about the order of operations. The G stands for uh, groupings. We always work inside of groupings first. The E then stands for exponents. And remember, exponents are both those little floating powers and their opposites, the radicals, the little checkmark houses. Uh, and then the M stands for multiplication and its inverse division. And then the A stands for addition and its inverse subtraction. Okay, groupings, exponents, multiplication, and its inverse addition and its inverse. That is the order of operations. So as I look at this expression here, uh, they think that it equals zero. Let us see if that expression truly does simplify to zero. Uh, I'm just writing it over here so I have space to go down because I, I am a mathematician. I always write my answers underneath. Okay, now according to the order of operations, you should do any multiplication before you touch any addition or subtraction. Addition and its inverse is subtraction. And so I'm going to do the multiplication problem first. Uh, the multiplication expression I'm going to simplify first. I'm going to uh, do 5 times 3. 5 times 3 is 15. Now, uh, whatever I have not touched from up above should drop so that I can use it now. I haven't done the subtraction. I haven't dealt with that first 15. And now I can see the new problem to do the new expression to simplify is just 15 minus 15. 15 minus 15 is 0. Uh, so does the left-hand side of this equation really truly equal 0? It does. This was a true statement, not a lie. I'll cross it off. Next one, students tell me all the time is a lie. Kate B's a lie. Then I bet it's five. I know it's five. I hear all kinds of crazy things. Uh, let's take a look and see if it's really true that this left hand expression simplifies to be equivalent to one. So again, I'm just going to move out here to give myself some more room. Could have gone underneath, but uh, I didn't leave myself enough space in the problem. Now, According to the order of operations, I should do exponents before addition and subtraction, but careful. Um, mathematicians can group things. One way we group things is using parentheses, and a grouping should be prioritized. You can see I have work to do on the inside of this grouping. Groupings should be the first thing you do when simplifying, so that's what I'll do first. 5 minus 4 is 1. Now notice I'm keeping my 1 in parentheses because I still haven't raised him to the 5th power. It actually wouldn't matter in this problem, but it does matter in other expressions. And so I'm going to leave those parentheses until after I finish my, uh, my uh, power, my exponent. So now this is why students tell me 5. They go, oh, Kate, 1 to the 5th power is clearly, definitely, surely, totally 5. And I'm like, y'all, um, did you forget what 5th power means? Uh, fifth power does not mean multiply 1 by 5. What it means is multiply 1 by itself 5 times. And what is 1 times 1? Well, 1 times 1, of course, is just 1. And I don't care how many times you multiply 1 by 1, all you're ever going to get is 1. You can keep doing that. 1 times 1 is 1, times 1 is 1, times 1 is 1, but all you're ever going to get is 1. So yes, uh, if I took this expression on the left and simplified it, it would be equivalent to 1. This also was true. This is not the lie. Uh, let's keep going. Okay, so 3 to the 
fourth power squared. Now, careful, careful, careful. Students love to default uh, to multiplying three times four here. I get two excuses for it. First thing is students are just automatically working left to right. Don't you automatically work left to right? We have an order that trumps left to right in math. The order of operations that we just discussed is always considered uh, rather than just working things left to right. Now, the other justification, though, that people give me is, Kate, my math teacher told me you have to do parentheses first. And you didn't understand something about what your math teacher was saying when they said parentheses. And that is one of the reasons that I choose to say G for groupings. You need to do any work that's inside of parentheses first, sure, because the parentheses are a type of grouping. But look inside this grouping here. What do I have? Inside the parentheses, there's just a four. There's no operation. There's nothing to do to that for inside that grouping. Uh, you know, I'm not going to start by multiplying three times four. Exponents are supposed to come before multiplication. I am supposed to, order of operations is grouping, exponents, multiplication, and division, addition, subtraction. I need to do my exponent first. I need to deal with four to the second power first. Now, careful, four to the second power is not eight. Four to the second power means four times four, four times itself, not four times two. So four times four is 16. I haven't dealt with the multiplication yet, so I'll leave the parentheses, and I haven't times by three yet. Okay, and now I can do three times 16. Let's see, I get 30 and 18, I get 48. If you don't believe me, you could come do it in some side work. You would not have a calculator on the GED if you were doing just a straight up order of operation problem. So clearly, uh, 3 times 4 to the second power is not equal to 144. It's equal to 40, 48. This was a lie. This is not true. There's the fraud. Now, that being said, as a lot of students have been pointing out to me lately, um, I am not perfect. I sometimes make mistakes. So let's just go check out D and see uh, if it really is also a lie. So D says that the square root of the difference between 25 and 16 is equal to 3. So I want the square root of the whole difference. Notice, and this is another reason that I teach G is for groupings, not P is for, as some of you guys learned, the order of operations, a different way. But G is for groupings. Why? Because parentheses are not the only things that group. Mathematicians use lots of symbols for grouping. And you can see here how my square root symbol is long. It's over the 25, but it's also over the minus 16. It has grouped this expression, 25 minus 16, under it. And so therefore, I must deal with that grouping first. I'm going to deal with what's inside the square root before I deal with the square root. So 25 minus 16 is 9. And now I'll take the square root of 9. And the square root of 9, what number times itself is equal to 9? Well, that's 3. Notice my square root symbol is gone now because I took the square root, it's done. The answer is just 3. There's just 3. That was the correct answer, not a lie. So what was the lie here? What was the fraud? It was C. If you have any questions about this or any other GED topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.